The American people and Congress are both split about what course of action we should take in the former Yugoslavia. A Newsweek poll finds 49% think the fighting in Bosnia is not a U.S. problem. A Time CNN poll finds 52% agrees with the earlier poll, saying that the U.S. has done enough to try and stop the fighting. What are America's vital interests in Bosnia anyway? Is this a moral question? Do we have a moral obligation to stop the bloodshed, our self-interest aside? What are the risks, both military and political, in using U.S. armed forces? We'll ask our guest, Representative Robert Torricelli, Democrat of New Jersey and member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, former Congressman Joseph Dioguardi, president of the Albanian American Civic League, who returned from the former Yugoslavia just last night, and in Washington, Senator John McCain, Republican of Arizona, member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Senator McCain will join us later, and we'll take your phone calls with your questions. Question for you, Robert Torricelli. Are you optimistic about this peace plan? No, I'm not, uh, John. It'd be my uh, guess that the uh, Serbian ambition is not going to uh, be thwarted by this peace plan. I, su I suspect they're looking for time, and at some point the fighting will start again. Uh, what do you think, uh, Representative, uh, former Representative Joseph DeGuardi? Now, you, <clears throat> if I'm correct, you unseated Bella Abzug, did you not? Back in 1986. So yes. you must be a very skilled debater. Well, let's say I have perseverance. <laughs> uh, Representative Tarasselli doesn't approve of the decision made by President Clinton to use the armed forces of the United States and to lift the embargo. Uh, inhibiting Bosnia from fighting its own battle against the cruel Serbian <clears throat> aggression. How do you feel about this? The only thing that will work with the Serbs is resolve. Uh, they started in 1989 in Kosovo. Two million Albanians. Kosovo a is a republic? Well, it's a declared republic by the people in Kosovo, but not recognized Technically by... Technically a province about the size was. of what? Well, about the size of Connecticut, let's say. Okay, a neighboring, a neighboring to Serbia. Uh, right now, the Serbs consider it part of Serbia. They consider it? But it used to have an equal vote with Serbia under the old uh, former Yugoslavia. Very complicated. Two million people in Two million Kosovo people. and 90% are Albanian. No police Albanian, no judges. The schools have been closed. Everybody fired from their jobs. The <clears throat> ethnic cleansing started there in 1989. And the failed foreign policy you see today started with President Bush... Eagleburger, Baker. Baker had the nerve to certify that the Serbs were in compliance with human rights, uh, uh, human rights conventions, and allowed the uh, bill that was going to deny aid to Yugoslavia, the Nichols D'Amato Amendment, to fail. Right. This is what set the stage right, for what's going on in Bosnia. Let's tie this back to, a, uh, to, the, to what's going on in Bosnia and in uh, Serbia. <clears throat> Your feeling is that if, if the Serbs prevail in Bosnia and, and this, these hostilities continue, then the Serbs will do the same thing. They will cleanse uh, uh, Kosovo of the Albanians. Is that correct? They are already doing it. The ethnic cleansing has started. 500,000 Albanians have already been forced. There are no jobs, no work. They've been put into Western Joe, Europe. Joe, how do you explain this? 90% of the 2 million people, so that's got to be 1.8 million people, right. are Albanians. The remainder, the tiny percentage remaining, the 10%, are Serbs, correct? Right, but who has the weapons? 60,000 troops are right now around Kosovo the way they're around Sarajevo. I saw the uh, artillery. They wouldn't let me in. I was at the border. The point is, these people have a gun to their head. And the point is, this is the way the Serbs have been acting since 1989, and they've been getting away with it. The so problem let them is buy weapons so they can lights. defend themselves. The, the alternative here is, we all agree, that the Muslims need to be defended. They shouldn't be slaughtered. Absolutely. Let them, like any other people, defend their own interests by getting weapons. Try to deny, deny the Serbs whatever weapons we can by the embargo. Weaken them economically. But you can't justify exchanging the lives of young American men and women in this crisis where there is no identifiable national American interest and the Italians, the French, and the British are sitting on their hands on a crisis which is a European crisis. Every problem in the world does not have an American solution where we should exchange American blood for it. Embargo them, 
sell weapons, arm the opposition, but not the exchange so of So you American favor lives. lifting the embargo? I would. What I don't favor, John, is airstrikes. You don't favor 25,000, an estimated 25,000 peacekeepers serving on the ground and in the air and uh, in the United States Navy over there, correct? I think we're setting ourselves up for a debacle and a terrible slaughter By the way, the, the, the 25,000 is an estimate. It's, a, it's, it's estimated to be approximately one-third of the 65 to 75,000 NATO-led forces, 25,000, one-third of that 75 uh, or 65,000 approximately will be American. What do you say to what he has to say, Joe? Well. The argument you just heard is the argument that was made in World War II and the reason why the death camps continued for five years. Because people said, well, we don't know that we have an interest over there. And Hitler got all kinds of green lights, starting with the Sudetenland and Czechoslovakia and Poland. The Serbs have been getting these same green lights with these right, siren calls since 1989. Why don't you roll out the scenario? Let's suppose that the Serbs get their way and they prevail in Bosnia. And then they, then they move into uh, uh, Kosovo and systematically, more systematically that, th th than they are now, with real intensity and a sense of mission, they, they ethnically cleanse Koso uh, Kosovo. What happens next? Well, if that happens, you've heard that the line has been drawn in the sand, not only by our President Bush, who didn't survive to fulfill his promises. Uh, Clinton thought he was going to do a better job. He didn't. The problem is that no, you've but got what to, happens well, over in that theater? John, it, what, you, what, is Macedonia you, drawn well, into it? First, let's talk about a country called Albania. Albania now is a sovereign democratic state. It has now gotten rid of communism after 50 years. I was just there with the Pope. They invested the first archbishop in 50 years. The point is, Albania, President Barisha told me personally that if there's any overt ethnic cleansing, as poor as Albania is, as, as small as it is, it is committed to act, and if it does, it is, it is assigned a defense pact with Turkey. Turkey comes in, what do you think is going to happen? Now, there's Greece your answer. It is in the vital national interest of the United States to prevent a third world war. What do you say to that? John, I think comparing the rump republic of Yugoslavia to Nazi Germany is more well, than a little Well, if you pull in absurd. Turkey and Greece... Yeah, but Turkey is not going to. I've been there, too, and met with their leadership. Turkey has made a judgment. It would not unilaterally, and they've promised the United States, unilaterally they will not become What do you say to that, Joe? I say it's wrong. I spoke to President Ozal several times before he died. I went to Houston when he was in a hospital, and he said point blank, we should be there already with NATO. Well, we don't want to act unilaterally. And maybe his feelings, but, but he's made a commitment that he won't do it. But if, if they go into Kosovo, and Albania gets put, put in that position, we right. must act. A final quick answer. What's the probability of Greece being drawn into this conflict? Very big. Why? Because obviously the geopolitics of the area requires, uh, uh, obviously, that the Greeks have some reaction. Greek, and I think the, then you'll the, see Macedonia the, as a hostage. The Greeks uh, desperately would like to repossess Macedonia, would they not? At least a part of it. At least a part and of it. And the reason it was and recognized... And they would use that perhaps as an occasion. Absolutely. No disrespect to the Greeks. Absolutely. And you right? know the reason why it was recognized? Because they were afraid Serbia and Greece were being prepared to dismember that Now, state. that's your argument that this is in the vital national interest of the United States. When we come back, Except I want that none of it has any foundation in any truth. It's rather no. absurd. We'll be right back. All the papers. Uh, Senator McCain, uh, NBC News, that Sterling News uh, Network, uh, the best. has learned that U.S. Special Forces are on the ground in Bosnia gathering intelligence probably and probably selecting targets. You're on the Armed Services Committee. Did you know about this? I, I did not, John, and this is another point that uh, I'd like to hear Bob's comments on is that I think the President, before he goes any further, has got to consult with the Congress and the American people. I suggest that he go on nationwide television and tell the American people what's going on, what our options are, and what uh, course of action he has chosen. I think, that, I think that is in the offing if, uh, if, if this uh, parliament does not ratify on Wednesday. I think that's the plan. Isn't that I what you so. understand? I do, John. But I think to, to follow the uh, Senator's point, whether or not any of us individually thinks this is the right thing to do militarily or not, one thing I hope we understand, this country cannot become engaged militarily if it is divided. It is at best divided on the idea of military intervention in Bosnia. 
and that's the best argument I know it's, for not doing it. It's divided. This country cannot go into conflict divided. Your, your point is uh, well taken, and it's divided unequally. The majority of the people, the clear majority, I say the consensus, there are other polls that bring the figure higher than 52 percent. Is not to do it. But they may be uninformed, and, John, and the more information they are there is. Informed. Maybe, are but the case, the case not only, as, as the senator has just suggested, hasn't been made to the Congress, more importantly, the American people. You go out there and look some mother and father in the eye and tell them if they're convinced that they should exchange their son and daughter for what's going on in the heart of Europe, while Europeans sit idle. I doubt many people are going to think their child's life is John, worth let's, it. Let's get John, to... Martin Luther King said it well. If there is injustice anywhere, then justice is threatened everywhere. We must look at this where innocent civilian life is being massacred, where the cottage is on a scale that you see right before you on the TV set. You see this as a moral imperative or a, or a strategic well, self-interest imperative? Well, maybe both, but certainly, you know, we have not built a wall around America when it, com when it, when it, when it comes to universal human rights. Well, every every the, life is precious, precious beyond description. Every single life. 135,000 people have been killed or they are missing in uh, Yugoslavia. That would inclu include Croats and Bosnians and Serbs and maybe others, okay? Now, that is, that is of considerable scale. Would you not agree? It is a scale. But what it is is it's less than the people who are now being killed in Peru, in the Punjab, in Cambodia. Is there a consensus here that would each of you like to intervene there too and shed American difference. blood? There's what is difference. the difference? What's the difference? We have armed Yugoslavia to the teeth for 50 years. We? And the people, yes, the United States and Russia for 50 years, that they played a, the broker. That's a shock and, to me. Well, that let me hear his point. Absolutely. Uh, Yugoslavia has played the broker between the East and the West for 50 years. They have all the weapons they need. Did you hear the story about the Greek ship off Somalia trying to sell Serbian weapons for cash to overcome the embargo? I it's imagine, a fact. I imagine Senator the, McCain the point would share is, my shock that we've well, been arming Yugoslavia while they, they have allied been, with the Russians Well, for 50 let me years. say this. They've sure. played the broker very well, and they have been masters of deceit, and they have gotten away with it. Milosevic has built his political base on nationalism, and he's continuing mean, to feed it. To the extent that we have armed Serbia, particularly, we are responsible for these deaths. Is that what you're well, saying? Well, at the least, we're responsible to see that people defend themselves. Sure, well, let me, let me hear John, Mc, John McCain. Do you want to address that point before I, I go to Barbara? Uh, yes, very quickly. The United States has shown uh, that we try to fulfill our obligations uh, from a moral standpoint. We just did that in Somalia. The, the question that plagues the American people, and frankly, our military leaders as well as our civilian leaders, is what can we do effectively? We're willing to go in with troops into Somalia because we could affect the region. We'll be willing to go into other places where we can beneficially affect it. But I keep sounding, I'm sorry to keep sounding like a broken record, but the fact is we don't have the viable military option that may make things worse than they were before if we go in in some kind of incremental, uh, ill-planned, ill-conceived, and ill-executed. Well, are, you, are you basing that on newspaper reading, uh, Senator? Are you basing Basing it on any knowledge, any intelligence that you have from the Pentagon, that the Pentagon is distressed because the Pentagon feels a John, that the goal, a, a that the goals are obscure, a b the military targets are obscure. Are you saying that? John, the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the head of NATO have testified publicly in open session before the Senate Armed Services Committee exactly that. And for six months, secret. for six yeah, months, there is exactly. a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or until last week, a senior military officer in this country or in NATO who believes, has argued, that airstrikes are going to have an effective military well, why impact. Why is it then that the national security chief of Clinton, Mr. Tony Lake, now agrees we must take action? Why is he's it agree, that the He's agreed it for several months. Right. Why is it the ambassador to the United Nations, Margaret Albright, has said the same thing? And our former colleague, my former colleague, Les Aspen, the Secretary Most of, of them, Defense, they now says common, we must do it. And what did you say, John? What did you say? They have one thing in common. None they've of them wear a I want to hear John. Anger. What? They've got one thing in common. They've never heard a shot fired in anger. Uh, our time has expired. I want to thank the members of the panel, the distinguished representative Robert Taraselli, uh, who serves in other foreign policy issues uh, frequently here. Also, I'd like to thank Senator John McCain, and I'd like to thank uh, former Representative Joseph Dioguati. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.